Hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the uh, channel Stock Markets with Bruce. Uh, if you're surfing YouTube and you stumbled onto this show, what is wrong with you? Um, oh, I know. You want to make money. <laughs> That's right. You want to make money in the market. That's why you hang out over here. A whole bunch of people hang out over here because they like making money in the market. Whether it goes up or down, money sideways, in the market. what does it matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't, you can make money anytime. Uh, let's make some money today. Uh, what's going to happen here? That is the question. We like talking about the stock markets in plain English. And today I'm doing it for you from Berlin, Germany. It's the last day for Jen and I. My Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife and I, it's our last day here in Germany. We got here last week on uh, Wednesday, and uh, <clears throat> we head out tomorrow. Going to Munich, baby. Our next stop on our European tour. Uh, just no end in sight. Um, so much fun. Love Germany. Love Berlin. One of my favorite places. Uh, I got to tell you, <clears throat> if you're like, if you're, if you're anything like me, <laughs> Hopefully you're not, but if you're anything like me, um, you're overweight a little bit. You know, you got a got a few extra pounds on you. You don't really need really. Um, there's ways you can get rid of these pounds uh, and yet have a good time doing it. And one of the ways to do that in this town is where you uh, well, you go outside of your hotel, and uh, you'll notice um, outside of basically uh, any hotel um, and outside restaurants and uh, public meeting places and, and, and uh, all the various squares they have here, you'll find, uh, you'll find bikes with the name Tier on it, T-I-E-R, and you'll find scooters all over the place that you can rent using an app. And what you do is, is you download an app like, like I did, and uh, the blue dot shows you where you are and the little other dots tell you where the scooters and bicycles are you can rent. And so what I do is, is uh, what I have been doing is, uh, you can notice here, there's like some, some scooters here, scooters here, and there's a bicycle. And uh, I grab one of these bikes and uh, you scan, you scan the, uh, you scan the little square thingy to uh, register your, your phone to the bike. You've already pre-registered your debit card to the thing and you hit the, the meter and for every minute you drive the bike you, you charge so many pennies a minute and uh i've been driving this electric bike around um from tier um for these quick little runs uh jen and i'll be in the hotel room and uh we need some beer and we need some caffeine free diet coke and we need some chocolate damn it chocolate uh cookies with chocolate on it damn it chocolate uh so uh i i uh, i go out to the hotel instead of grabbing a cab and, and getting to a grocery store that's like 10 euros away each direction um i grab one of these bikes with a basket on it and uh, boom, uh within uh, five minutes i'm at the grocery store park the bike turn the meter off go in do your shopping come back out and find another bike that inevitably there's always a ton of them out there the app will tell you where the nearest one is if you have to walk to it. Pop the scanner onto that bike, hop on it, drop it off at the hotel, done. And uh, I'm I'm using like uh, four to five euros of, of money, four to five euros for a round trip instead of 20 euros in a cab. And I'm cycling somewhat. I'm not cycling all of it, but some of it. Um, and I'm in better shape. <laughs> just, just uh, how can I not be? I'm sitting in front of a computer all day long, talking to some of the greatest uh, viewers the YouTube has got to tell them how to make money in the market. And I'm getting fat doing it. Uh, this gets me up and about a little bit, and uh, enjoy the weather. Yesterday, I had to, uh, I had to go to the grocery store. And um, here's the thing about Germany as opposed to America or Canada. Sundays, stores are closed. <laughs> so typical grocery stores are not open on Sundays. It's a Monday to Saturday thing. This weekend is a long weekend, so today they're closed too. So I knew uh, from my past experience, if I wanted to get to a grocery store yesterday, Sunday around 5 in the evening, 5 in the afternoon, 6 o'clock in the evening, there's only one place that I can go, 
where I can pretty well assure myself that even at five, six o'clock on a Sunday, there's a grocery store open and that's at the main train station, the Hauptbahnhof. You got to go to the main straight train station. It's the only place where all the businesses are open because 300,000 people a year go through this place. Um, and so, uh, you yeah, know, that just makes sense. I'm not sure if I have a shot of it. I'm not sure. If, yeah, I do. That That is the Hauptbahnhof right there from a ship tour. There it is right there. That This is the main train station. It doesn't, it looks like a skyscraper, but uh, 300,000 people a day go through this thing. Um, a day. Uh, Two million a week. 100 million a year go through this station with four levels of tracks, subways, trams, um, uh, regional trains, international trains. Get there. Um, I drove the bike over there. Uh, that took me about eight minutes, 10 minutes. And uh, it was a zoo. It was just packed. And it was just people coming up long weekend. They're all over the place. Get into a line. I had to get into a line to go into their grocery store, which is a smaller kind of a thing. Um, 200 people in line waiting to get in. It only took five minutes. They had eight cash registers on the way out, handling people on the way out. So as two or three came out, they had two or three in. The flow was constant. And I got in there and uh, picked up some stuff and paid for my goods. Came out of there and happened to notice just down the way there was a McDonald's. And I thought, you know, Jed would love a Big Mac. And so would I. So I went down to the big, good old McDonald's at the railway station, grabbed some Big Macs and fries, got them to go into this bag that I purchased, into the basket, back to the hotel, six euros round trip instead of probably 30 euros by cap. And uh, I got to justify eating a Big Mac pedaling the bike, although it was electric, there was still a lot of pedaling I had to do. Fantastic. Love this town. Just just love it. I love the atmosphere here. I just love the vibe. And uh, I am uh, I am so impressed always when I come to Germany how grown up it is here. So grown up. Um, makes, uh, makes our home area, uh, Canada and elsewhere, it just makes us come off as teenagers, uh, as a society. Here, they're grown up. It is really amazing and uh, really refreshing, really nice. Uh, does everyone get along here? No. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, it's just not in your face, and that's kind of nice. Uh, certain things are just left unsaid, and you go about your life, and I like it. Um, do enjoy. Folks, we're going to have an up opening today, no matter what way you lean politically or emotionally or anything else we're going up higher today because money is money uh we're up 263 points on the dow we're up uh, 45 points on the s p right now we're up 194 on nasdaq we have about uh, 50 odd minutes to go before we crank this thing up uh 0.8 of a percentage point for the dow 1.1 percent gain on s p and a one and a half percent gain so far on nasdaq it's a good decent opening Oil is down 39 cents. I couldn't be happier to see that. 118.48. I'd like to see that down 20 bucks from here. But 118.48 in West Texas at the moment. Uh, there's a there's a ton of news out there. And then there's a ton of not news out there. And what I mean by not news is that today is a holiday, as I mentioned earlier, in Germany and most of Europe. It's a Monday long weekend. So only the London market was open today. The rest of the markets in Europe were closed. So we don't have a lot of um, info that we can share from other spots. I do note that the 10-year uh, uh, U.S. 10-year uh, note is trading at 2.98%, just a hair under 3% even. And that is having an effect, um, of course. Um, but at the moment, the euro is not trading. The British pound is, it's up a little bit today against the US dollar because the US, the UK rates are higher as well. Uh, Asia overnight, uh, they were higher. Um, and like I said here, we are expecting a higher opening. How far we'll go, how, how, how dramatic, I don't know because it is a, we're not gonna get the European participation per se, although there are a number of European traders um, individuals and, and hedge funds that have access <clears throat> to the U.S. markets and will trade them. So we'll see that. 
In the uh, pre-market right now, on some of our favorite stocks, I'm showing uh, an eight cent gain on Rocket Lab to 498. I got SoFi at 709 up a dime. GameStop up 163 to 135.33. Although this morning it was showing as high as 138, couldn't hold that, and it's back up a little from there, but just under 136. AMC is up 22 cents. Matterport up 14 cents. Uh, I have nothing on 23 and Me. I got a nickel gain on Spire to 177. I don't show anything yet on ATIP. Um, Smart Rent, I'm showing up 17 cents to 612 a share. Got six there at 1498 right now. That's the high of the uh, of all time, but that's pre-market. We'll wait for the opening to see if that's real or not. Apple up a dollar 87 today is an electronic uh, presentation day. Uh, these used to be in person, but uh, this year, like last year, probably digital only format. They're probably going to update and tell us about updates about their iOS 18 system. Uh, there's talk about news on their uh, iPods, iPads, I should say iPads, and there might be some updates on Apple Watches, and there may be, maybe an Apple Air computer update of some kind. We'll see if anything happens on that. Um, Goldman Sachs up 381 to $322.49. We got Cisco up 45 cents in the pre-market. That's a nice solid move up. We did lose 54 cents on Friday, so this is a 45 cent recovery from Friday's loss. 45.70 last on Cisco. Tesla is up 22 bucks to 7.25. Arc Innovations <clears throat> up a dollar 27 to 44.43. Um, a little better there. Arc Innovation. Microsoft up 303, uh, 273 dollars. Bed Bath Beyond is up 16 cents to 8.26. Pfizer up four cents after gaining 52 on Friday. 53.25. Looking good. HPQ, Hewlett Packard uh, Inc., uh, $40 on the nose, up 18 cents. Twitter's up 23 cents to 40.39 right now. So it's an up uh, morning uh, across the board for sure. All right. Uh, welcome, one. Welcome all to the show here. It's good to see you. Um, there's talk about um, a better market. We could have a better market in the next few weeks and months because the China lockdown thing seems to be easing. That's the word. Um, but um, there are still issues in China that have not gone away, will not go away just because the lockdown is, is easing up, in particular uh, real estate values, um, slower markets, <clears throat> uh, slower real estate sales, uh, bloated inventories, all kinds of um money problems in China. So we'll watch and wait for that. Oil, uh, it's funny because um, here in Berlin, just to kind of give you some flavor, um, there are Ukrainian flags being flown in many places here in Berlin, many. Um, embassies uh, are flying their flag and a Ukrainian flag beside their flag that that is very significant but most most people may not pay attention to it don't get it don't understand it there are countries who are making it blatantly obvious and blatantly like in your face we support the ukraine position and we're not impressed with what russia is doing the russians don't like it um and friends of russia might take note but that is the point Friends of Russia, you better make note of the fact that a whole bunch of countries around the world are supporting Ukraine and they're doing it in interesting ways. Not only sending arms, money, relief, everything else, bringing in refugees and all that, but at embassies in Berlin, flying the Ukraine flag beside their flag. Uh, Germany has the Ukraine flag all over the place. Uh, they're really behind them here. Um, uh, it's interesting. Um, what was I going to say there? I was, I was trying to put all this together and I lost my train of thought because I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, the Russia thing and the oil thing. All right, so oil prices are going higher. We know that. Um, what the Russians didn't count on was they didn't expect the Western world to be so enthusiastic in supporting Ukraine the way we are across many layers 
There's military assistance. Okay. Now there's the embargo of Russian oil. Really? The Russians didn't think this would happen. They didn't think that the Western countries would stand for $120 oil. And I think what the Russians were counting on, they were really hoping for this, was that average people, whether they be Americans, Canadians, UK folks, Europeans, they felt that we as, an, as voters would go nuts with $120 oil and we would drum out of office our politicians. It's not happening because there's no advantage to one politician blaming another politician for $120 oil when it's obvious the reason it's at 120 bucks a barrel is because Russian oil is being cut out of the market and it's putting pressure on other sources of oil that, that is not Russian denominated. The Russians just were convinced that we were going to be so uh, dollar centric that we would let them get away with doing whatever they were going to get away with in Ukraine. And so far, some of the stuff they pulled off there, pretty atrocious. And have they been brought account to account? It's been brought to light. Um, thankfully, they haven't had complete and total success in everything they've wanted to do. And they've had to pay a terrible, terrible price economically and in loss of life to do what they've been doing. And the question is, how long will the Russians tolerate this downward slide in everything that they're going through right now. It's not it's not pretty over there. But here in Germany, um, oil can go up another five bucks a barrel for all they care. Gasoline goes up another 15 cents a liter, they'll pay it. Uh, because the alternative is unacceptable. What's the alternative? Don't do anything and let the Russians think about expanding their territory beyond Ukraine. Unthinkable. Un unnegotiable. Like there's no we're not even going to talk about that here. So uh, Europeans have got a lot more on the line than, um, than Americans or Canadians have. Sure, prices are higher. Yeah, food has gone up in price, inflation. But there's another problem. You got this menacing power over here, backed by the Chinese, by the way, who want to advance into Europe. And European countries are going, uh-uh, we're no, no, we'll pay more for oil. We'll pay more for a loaf of bread. We'll have higher inflation. But if that, the bottom line of all that means that our country can support Ukraine in any way that we need to, we'll, we'll pay that price. And that's what the deal is around here. That's the, it's not even, it's not even a, a, it's not even a debate. Like there isn't any, there aren't like people going, we should get out of Ukraine and leave them alone. We should let the Russians do what they want. There's none of that. <laughs> no love for the Russians here whatsoever, absolutely zip. And so if the federal German government and, and, and governments of France and Italy want to press ahead with support for Ukraine, no politician is gonna pay a price politically for it. As a matter of fact, they'll probably get more votes. So it's interesting. Uh, being here versus watching it from back in North America is really, really interesting and um, what I love doing, and I've mentioned it before, is I love to people watch. And uh, yesterday, Jennifer and I, we had an opportunity, two, two opportunities yesterday, where we hung out at the uh, Sony Center, uh, which is near Potsdamer Platz. And we, were, we had breakfast at a restaurant there, outdoor restaurant, seating area. We had an umbrella over our heads to keep us from getting sunburned because it was right, nice and warm. And we're just people watching just watching people come and go, coming into the restaurant, having a seat, coming and go. And then the second time, right at the Brandenburg Gate, we were um, um, half a block away from the Brandenburg Gate at a Starbucks, <laughs> packed to the rafters Starbucks, by the way. Starbucks Berlin makes a lot of money, just in case you want to know. They make they do well here. And it's with Germans and with the, uh, with the French and the Polish and the, who, whoever, the, wherever they're from. All nationalities are inside these stores. It's quite amazing. So you're surrounded by a global family of people, people watching the folks at the Brandenburg Gate doing whatever it is they're doing, taking photos of themselves and selfies, and what have you. And interestingly, right in the right beside the Brandenburg Gate, and we were on the East Berlin side of the Brandenburg Gate, so just 
give you an idea, the park, the Tiergarten Park, was on the West German side. And on the East German side, if you look at the top of the Berlin, uh, at the top of the uh, Brandenburg Gate, the horses are coming at you. That's where the horses are coming at you with the, with the chariot, you know. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I hope you do. Um, let's see if I got this uh, somehow. Can I can I do this in any way? Yeah, I got this right here. Uh, there we are. Okay, well, that's the Brandenburg Gate right there. And uh, uh, Jen and I were sitting uh, in, I was sitting in my seat at the Starbucks, taking a photo of all the folks over here milling about. And uh, this building here beside us right here, that's the French embassy. But over here, this building, that's the American embassy. And um, what you may or may not know, there's there's the uh, there's the top of the Brandenburg Gate. You, you've all seen this. Uh, what you may or may not be aware of is that the um, the U.S. Embassy um, there we go. Here, here we are right here. There's 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 the Brandenburg Gate. There's the U.S. Embassy here and here, and right there, right there is kind of a canopy where you can go in. And right there is where the American flag hangs. That's America. That's American territory. Uh, that building is in the eastern sector. That is what used to be known as East Berlin. And uh, right after the wall came down and reunification, the American embassy was built there, right there, because that territory ain't going back to the east ever again. That was that is now unified Germany. And America has made its point by saying, our embassy is here at the Brandenburg Gate across from the French, our allies during the Second World War. Um, we're across each other for the Brandenburg Gate on the east side of the uh, Brandenburg Gate. The Russian embassy is a couple blocks further down. And it's always, it always had been a few blocks further down. The British embassy the uh, is beside the American embassy, just behind it. And the Canadian embassy, for you Canadians out there, is just a block away uh, what again what once was i believe east german territory it's now uh even the death strip might have been the death strip between the two uh the canadian embassy is there and there's a ukrainian flag flying nearby too uh, it's quite quite amazing to watch it's a <clears throat> a powerful statement if you can un if you catch it if you happen to note that you go, oh, yeah, oh, they're flying the Ukrainian flag beside their, oh, <laughs> yeah, they're not kidding. Serious stuff. Anyway, I go on. I uh, I uh, might be digressing a bit. I hope I'm not boring you with this. Uh, this this Canadian who is on, who is homeless with his Jennifer Aniston looking like what? Uh, we get the pleasure at the moment of traveling a little bit and uh, i still have the opportunity to speak with you during monday to fridays best i can anyway and um giving you my impression of just what i see going on out here and how the world is reacting to what how we react to different things um and uh it is uh, it is a it is a pr i take it as a privilege to be able to do what i'm doing um to to be able to see this we did take jen and i we did take a boat tour on saturday on the Spree River, the S P R E E is spelled Spree River, um, or Spree if you're American. Um, we we took a two and a half hour boat tour um, to some of the. Uh, we ended up in, in 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 what would have been East Berlin, and then back to West Berlin, and back to East Berlin, because the Spree River, is sort of a series of canals, and it, it it's a big circle. And of course, no river goes in a complete circle, uh, but the Spray River has been engineered and there have been locks built in so that you can raise, be raised up for one half of it and then lowered in the other half and around you go. Um, there are all kinds of tour boats in Berlin that can handle anywhere from 30 or 20 to 150 people each. And uh, here we are on this, this boat. Um, and they have on the overhead speaker in German and English what you're looking at from the side of the river. And uh, we've done this, Jen and I, back in 2015. We wanted to do it again, and uh, we enjoyed it. And it was a nice, warm, sunny 
kind of cloudy day, which was good because the cloud kept the direct sunlight off of, you know, this. But still, it was, uh, it was a beautiful day and we really enjoyed it and got to see a lot of Berlin again that we remembered from back in 2014 and 15. Highly urge you to, you ever get the chance, come to Germany, make sure you come to Berlin, make darn sure. Um, but give yourself a week because, man, oh, man, you cannot, you cannot uh, do this town any justice or yourself. You are you are ripping yourself off if you come here for three days. You're absolutely screwing yourself. You've got to come here for a week to really understand and see some of these places that are so embedded in our lives, actually, especially our parents' lives, our grandparents' lives, big time big time um yeah it's pretty interesting to see and um the thing that i also am impressed with um in germany uh, i was impressed in dortmund i was impressed in hamburg and i'm impressed here is um depending on where you are but you go into um, a hotel hotel lobby and you're registering for a room uh depending on the brand and the hotel obviously but uh, you're talking to people behind the counter, just like in America, that are likely university-aged students working these jobs. These are probably part-time employees, or they're full-time during the summer and part-time the rest of the year. These franchise hotels like the Hiltons and the Marriott's and others, just like in America, they hire um, uh, uh, people to work certain jobs. Um, and uh, you'll be amazed at how well spoken they are in English and how incredibly professional they are. It's really impressive. Um, we've all had this experience, I'm sure, where you've uh, checked into a, maybe a hotel um, in, your, in your home country and you've been less than impressed with the staff. <laughs> and I chortle at that because Oh, I've had some interesting fun times at front desks. Um, here, it is, uh, uh, it, it is a pleasure. It is a treat. Um, man, do they, do they know what they're doing? And uh, now, I will also clarify, Jen and I are not staying in Motel 6s, okay? We're, we're not. <laughs> we're staying in some nice places. They're not the most expensive hotels in Europe or anything like that, but they're really nice. And... Um, we know we could be doing this for less. We know we could be going cheaper, <laughs> but we're 66 now, and one of us has um, mobility issues, and there's just no damn way we're going to uh, cheap out on it. And so it's going to be done right or not at all. And we've been lucky, too, in that through Expedia and doing my due diligence, trying to find places for us to stay, we've been finding hotels, finding them with pools, spas, and you know, so that we can try to recover physically from, you know, especially for Jennifer, the, the physical ordeal of going through, um, trying to get through, you know, a day without too much pain. Not easy. Anyway, we're, we're enjoying it thoroughly. We thank you for your patience and tolerance while we are doing this trip. And I hope that you guys will make money today and every day as we go forward. I think the Dow might go up over 300 points. We're up at 297 now on the pre-market. We got a half an hour to go. We're up 296, 297, 296, 250 point gain pretty well on the S&P and uh, NASDAQ up 203. So we got we got a good pre-market going here. Um, that I hope will, will last a long time into this day. That would be really nice see how this uh, how this comes along anyway thank you all for uh, for popping in and those of you who are throwing uh, thumbs ups our way already thank you guys uh all all of you for that it uh, really helps um we got 86 already from cam hines and not your daddy so far his numbers 86 jennifer's here vernon edwards good morning um anyway yeah good stuff what else is going on um <laughs> Kiwi is asking, oh, do you not call the, the who do you, the people who complain endlessly in the United States? What do you call them? <laughs> and, and Pharma Babe says, we call them Karens. <laughs> uh, we've had other <coughs> we've had other names in the past. Uh, we're not going there. 
Yeah. Oh, man. What can I say? Good morning, Olivia and Hector and Bilbus. Uh, good morning to all of you here. Um, <laughs> Um, a sign says that the UBI, the Uncle Bruce Index, is now at 544. Uh, last month was 506. A year ago, it was 1221. So the markets have come down, haven't they? Sell my house in Upland Marlboro. Number 81 is here. Nazareth is 79 is here. Welcome. And thank you all for these thumbs ups. I do appreciate you all uh, uh, popping in here. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. Karen's. Yes, that's what we call them. We call them Karen's. Um, yeah, well, we we did see our share, Jen and I. We did see our share of complainers this weekend and episodic, uh, interesting episodic events this weekend. Uh, before our cruise, as a matter of fact, uh, we were supposed to be on a ship cruise at something like eleven forty-five or something like that, and and we took a cab to get to the dock to catch our boat. We missed it. We 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 got there just as as it was leaving. <laughs> so. There was a guy there in a little ticket booth, and we showed him our ticket. Oh, he says, yeah, they're just leaving. Oh, we can put you on the next one. Oh, okay, when's the next one? The next one's in uh, three hours. Okay. No big, it was Saturday. So we just got new tickets, and I, I said to Jen, you know what? We could sit over there. Uh, they have umbrellas and tables right beside the canal, and we can have a bite to eat, and we can have a cool, bubbly beverage. And uh, people watch. Okay, let's go over there. So we just hung out, got to know the waiter. <laughs> it was fantastic. And we just took our time, and we had a, had a bite to eat. And uh, I, I started with a coffee, and then I had a beer. And or did I did I have a beer that first? I can't remember if I did. I know Jen had a beer. Um, and then we got on the ship. And, yeah, I don't think I had a beer. I had a, I had a coffee, maybe a cola. And then on the ship, I had a beer. I did have a beer on the boat. Uh, and it was a wonderful day, just a wonderful day, just to hang out in Berlin to almost do nothing but to be observant. It's kind of cool. You can do that in Washington, D.C. You can do this in uh, New York. You can do it in other areas, but you really can't sit down at an outside cafe for two and a half hours and relax because the waiter, the wait staff will kind of get you out of there. They want to turn you over into another customer. Europe, it's a little different. It's not quite the same. Uh, it's not quite so intense. Anyway, what can I say? Um, Cindy B, you had me looking up German maps. I love it. My family came from uh, uh, Schalweg Holstein. Holstein. Yeah, we've been to Dortmund, now uh, Hamburg, now Berlin. Now we're going to Munich, and then we're going to Vienna. And then from Vienna, we're going to Zurich, Switzerland. That is our route as we know it for now. Um, and we're doing it all by rail. Uh, and we're just letting it happen. And uh, our rail pass is working out beautifully. I, I know for a fact we've had more than $650 of rail rides so far, um, all in, I'm sure. And we still have seven days to go to use up our passes, at least seven more. So we're going to get our hands on Fifteen hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars of train rides with a six hundred fifty dollar pass, yeah, baby, and no airport crap. Lovely, um, yes. DQ number one oh seven. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> when you can't remember you had a beer, you had one. <laughs> Vilbus, who knows? Volume is a little low, so we might still get a dip in the 120s. Hopefully under 120 first. We'll see if we're not at that time. Appreciate see what's happening. We're talking about GameStop here. Uh, GameStop is 135 right now. Pre-market. 26 minutes to go before opening. We're up a buck fifty, but only a buck fifty. We were as high as 138 in the pre-market about three hours ago for probably that amount of time. Um I don't know if GameStop will hold these levels this week. Um, they may they may drop. The the one thing that could make the stock go up in theory would be an announcement from the company that they had a board of director meeting, that they voted a stock split, and they tell us what it is and when and all that. And that could get a reaction, but that even that might only last a day or two, and then we kind of come down again. The question is when, how, what, where. I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see what's going on. 
when you can't remember, you've had a lot more than one. Thank you, Kiwi. Um, Bama Babe, Uncle Bruce, my grandfather, after World War II, adopted a German boy. He was 11. He was schooled here and made a cardiologist practicing in Texas. When he retired, he moved back to my hometown, Dresden. Isn't that something? That's amazing. Um, Slayer, yeah, already heard a lot of difference from two U.S. channels that went from Germany to USA. Oh, see, I'm one of those that wants to go to America, Seattle, or Canada would be my dream place, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, um, funny thing, uh, you don't know what you have until you miss it. You don't know what you have until you see something else. You know what you have when you see something else, I suppose. And, um, um, uh, you know, Jen and I have had, we've traveled, traveled a little bit, not like unbelievably extensively, but we've done a bit of traveling. And uh, we enjoy going to the UK. Um, it's got its uniqueness to it. Uh, Netherlands is cool. Uh, Netherlands is really interesting. Uh, of course, it's only Amsterdam, so, you know, I haven't seen the rest of it. Didn't see Belgium. We trained through Belgium. Haven't been to Denmark. Would love to go to Copenhagen. Sweden, Norway, Finland. We have a reason to come back. We have so much more to catch. Uh, Portugal, Spain, France, Italy. I mean, the rest of it. You know, there's so much more. This trip, we'll do Germany, and then we'll do Austria for a little bit with Vienna, and then over to Switzerland. Uh, but, you know, there's things we miss about home, uh, but there's things that we're really enamored with here, really impressed with, and it just it just, it is amazing. Um, I sure don't miss the, uh, I, I, I have to admit, I do read headlines, you know, New York Times, CNN, Washington Post, CBC, which is Canada's broadcasting. You know, I mean, I see the North American headlines and we don't miss the mass shooting headlines. We, we don't miss this. We know what's going on. We just are, it just is not, it's not part of the story here. There's no one here talking about that kind of stuff here at all. Uh, really um, um it's a nightmare you know people admit they 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 just they just go oh my god you know, they just can't believe that this is happening but um i sure don't miss that stuff i'll tell you that okay um who else is here uh odin's pumpkin i'm number 114 um you might recognize the dresden name uh, dresden is the home of fine china says kiwi Carol, I'm number 122, Bruce, on the thumbs up meter. Thank you guys for these thumbs ups already. Appreciate this. We have 22 minutes to go until we open for trading. 135.53 on uh, on GameStop. Uh, yeah, this is cool. I I I uh, I can't help uh, but uh, I have a special place for Berlin because of our daughter Jennifer and I. Uh, she lived here for about almost a year in 2014-15. Uh, and uh, she was homesick, uh, obviously, uh, but she was also thrilled to be here. And we were thrilled that she was here and that she was our eyes and ears of what it's like living here. And when we came to visit her uh, for Christmas time, and then we came again in, in the following April, a second time to visit her, uh, she got to show us her hometown of Berlin, her you know new temporary hometown of Berlin. And the, what she had picked up, what she had learned, in such a short period of time, it was just it was just mind numbing, and I loved it because my mother is German, my father was from Lithuania, and there are relatives here. Uh, there were many, many more relatives here 50 years ago, but there are you know many have passed due to time, and there are relatives in North America. There are relatives here, uh, so I've he always heard about Germany and, and, and the culture and, and the history, of course, but um, living it through your daughter is a unique experience um and then being with her in this area where she's just completely comfortable taking us onto a subway uh, or a tram or going from this station to this station and then we're going to walk two blocks over to that shawarma place or we're going to go over to here or we're going to it was pretty cool pretty cool to have your daughter show you around this little place this unique place not little unique place five million people here now coming back on our own she's not here someone's missing um so we're seeing berlin from another angle now um we are seeing ghosts of our daughter here where she's in 
she's at home in Canada. And now we're telling her what we're doing. <laughs> and we're driving her nuts because we're sending her photos of uh, this place or that place. Like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, I miss that. Um, because each neighborhood has its unique feel and so on. It is an amazing uh, spot, no question about it. Splair, uh, that's why I would first start only with work and travel visa because I'm sure I would miss a lot, but I will regret later to didn't see enough and really all the world has beautiful places. It is amazing. Bama babe, uh, Kiwi, yes, Dresden, Germany. Uh, Splair, with the nightmares, you are right. There's stuff I never imagined that is somewhere normally. Um, Beach Boy, so Uncle Bruce, if I got GameStop June 17, 110 written, is it time to wait? Is it let it shrink with time? What do you think? The answer, my friend, is blown in the wind. What we do is we wait for our contracts to go down in value as they approach book value. <clears throat> There's no question about it that by this Friday, the 10th of June, any GameStop contracts that are in the money, at least $5 or more in the money, they will come down to about book value plus maybe a dollar. That's how much they're going to shrink. So if you've got a, a call written, you've written calls, they're in the money, and there's a five, six dollar premium on these things, a time premium. This time premium is going to shrink between today and Thursday and Friday of this week. <clears throat> and so the question is, what will the stock do between now and Thursday and Friday of this week? That is the proverbial question for option holders. So 110s that Beach Boy has are now $25 in the money at the moment at 135 a share, technically speaking. Obviously, if they are trading at 125 a share tomorrow, he's only in the money $15. But the time premium on these might be $5 a share today. <clears throat> so that, yeah, they're worth $25, but they're actually trading at 30 and tomorrow they're worth $15 and they're trading at 20. But by tomorrow they might lose a dollar or two of time premium and come down to that 19 or 18 level. Eventually, by Thursday, they will trade at just book value. And that is where you pull the pin to make your move. Now, for Beach Boy and anyone like Beach Boy, if you've written 105s, 100s, 110s, anywhere in between these ranges, 115s, and you're going to do a rollover, you have a couple of ways to do rollovers. The easiest way to do a rollover is to buy back your call that is expiring this Friday and write a call that expires next Friday or the Friday after that or the Friday after that or the after that at the same strike price. Because right at the moment, as I just said a minute ago, it is possible that a call option that expires this Friday, that is $20, $25 in the money, may have a $5 time premium on it right now. Well, it won't have that on Thursday. But a contract you write that's two or three weeks down the road will have a time premium on it. And that's the key, is that you might be buying back your 110 call this week for, say, $20. And you might write another 110 call good for three or four weeks out from here and you could get five or six or seven dollars or eight dollars a share more for it for that contract it's the same strike price but you're bringing in more cash and time is money money you deserve now <clears throat> if you're going to write a call that's three four five weeks further down the road you've got to take a look at a call option that has a higher strike price strike price on it so if you've written a 110, you might want to look at a 115 or a 120 call option, strike price call option, for two, three, four, five weeks down the road to see if it's possible to whatever you pay for your contract here, the one you're, that's dying on Friday, can you get just as much money or more for the next call you're writing that is down the highway a few weeks, but it might be 5 or $10 higher in strike as well. That's the ultimate move. Because if you can move up 5 or $10 in strike price per contract, you're moving 500 to to $1,000 higher on the exercise price you're going to get paid. It's a 100 share contract. One share, one contract is 100 shares. So if you can get $10 a share more, by being theoretically exercised. Uh, and you can write that contract out far enough out at the same price it's going to cost you to buy the contract back now or more. 
you've got more money in your pocket and a higher strike price for more time. That's a win-win in my opinion. On the other hand, you can just do it at the same price. You can write a 110, buy a 110 now, write a 110 for a month from now, a week from now, or two weeks from now, whatever you want, and take the added cash and stock, you know, stock that in your account and leave it there. If the shares are 135 in three weeks from now, four weeks from now, those contracts you wrote for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars higher than what you just bought back, they will shrink down to the same price that the ones you're buying back are trading. In other words, you're making money on time. Time will make you money. It'll also build your powder up so that if you need to buy back your calls, you can do so. In the meantime, in between time, uh, between now and Friday, if the shares want to go down to 110 apiece, obviously a contract that's 25 in the money this morning is going to be at book value only between now and Friday. It might only be worth 3 or $4 a pop. And Beach Boy will be going, hey, this is great. I'm just going to buy these calls back, man. I sold them for 9 something. They're trading at 4 something. I'll buy them back for 4 something. And I've made my $5 a contract. Uh, when I wrote these 110s, the stock wasn't at 110. The stock was like at 100. Uh, so if they're trading at 110 and I can buy my calls back for 4 or $5 each, I've not only made money on my calls because I bought them back for less than I wrote them for, I've also raised my, my stock is up in values. I'm a double winner. And now I'm going to look at writing maybe 120s for a week or two or three. Up. On the other hand, if the shares... Uh, you know, just kind of sit here between 125 and 115 range. They kind of do that. Beach Boy may pick his point, his moment, where he realizes, oh, okay, I can buy my calls back for kind of what I sold them for, maybe three, four dollars more than what I sold them for, not much more. But my stock is up 20 bucks a share or 15 bucks a share, man. I'm I'm up 15 on my stock, and I lost four on this option right. I'm ahead 11 bucks a share. Nice. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy back my 110s. And I'm going to write 120s, 125s for several weeks now. So that's what we're up to. And we'll watch that today, closer, tomorrow and Wednesday. And see what uh, this market wants to bring us. Yeah. Okay. France, the elephant room, Amazon, yay or nay? There's the question. Amazon trades today. It's trading right now in the pre-market as a split stock. Amazon is trading at 125.21. It's up 286 a share right now. Well, 286 a share gain means it's up $56 because it just split 20 to 1 over the weekend. So in theory, if you want to, you could try to buy 100 Amazon right now. And you could try to write 135 calls against it if you wanted to and try to make money on it. You could do that. If you bought five Amazon shares last week, last month, you bought five or six or eight or 10 or 20 or however many you bought, you have 20 times the number of shares now. As long as you had five, you now have at least 100. If you have 100, games, uh, 100 Amazon now or 200 or 300 or 400, you can now write calls, 100, one call for every 100 you got. So today you could take a look at the option market, see how the stock does today. You might wait till tomorrow or Wednesday because you're sitting here going, hey, <clears throat> shares are up 280 right now. It's 56 bucks. Um, I bought these five shares uh, a week and a half ago, and the stock went up $300 last two weeks, uh, which is the equivalent of, what was that, uh, 300 divided by 20, $15. Uh, they've gone up nicely. They're up again today. Um, maybe they want to reach 130-something, and then I'll write 135s, or they might go to 132, and I'll write one. 40s for two or three weeks out. I might do that. Again, this is the beauty of a, a post-split situation. Expiration is next Friday, says Beach Boy. I don't have to worry about this week, Bruce. I got next week. So Beach Boy, you're in even a better position than I had mentioned. If you're not worrying, if you're not expiring this Friday, but next Friday, all of you who are in the GameStop contracts can sit comfortably back and just let, let the stock perform. Let it do what it does, and if it does a, a back off, it backs off to 110.15. Some of you may be in a position to say, 
I might do a rollover now. I might do a rollover with a week and a half to go before my contract expires. Even though my contract has a $5 time premium on it, I'm still going to roll over. Why? Because I can roll over into a higher strike price four weeks down the road, get not only that $5 premium, but another $5 premium because it is a four-week further contract, and I moved up 10 bucks a share on strike. Win, win, win. If you don't understand anything I'm saying right now, it's because you're not watching my classes and if you're not watching my classes you kind of trying to make money with one hand tied behind your back that's not good uh, so you may want to check my website out uh called stockmarketswithbruce.ca the ca at the end is canada check out the website and uh head on over there and uh check out my um my classes you'll you'll find there's my home page here i think there it is see if i get this to come up i'm not sure it will show it might show it might not i don't know uh yeah there it is there there's my there's my home page and uh if you click on the top where it says classes you get you get that picture right there attention students classes and session and then you can just take the classes and learn how to do the option thing here's lesson one how to buy and sell puts and calls lesson number two how to write calls and put options very important to classes. Uh, then there's three and four, using aggressive trading strategies to profit from stock options. And uh, using aggressive trading strategies to profit from writing contracts. Um, winning strategies, new investors need to know. Common mistakes investors make. Oh, you have to know this. Uh, earning income from writing put contracts. How to trade stock option credit spreads. Uh, how to trade call and put butterfly options. How does the how does Uncle Bruce pick his favorite stocks? How does he do that? Using poor man covered call writing strategies to quit your day job. This has been one of the most popular lessons that I've done, along with this one, stock option rollover strategies, calls and puts. And that's what we're talking about right now, rollover strategies. And then the latest class I just did just a little while ago is number 13. That's not it right there. What am I doing? Showing the British pound. Uh, lesson number 13 is up now, and I haven't got it up here, but... Uh, we talk about oh hang on a second i gotta i gotta take care of this sorry folks i gotta get gotta get my gotta get my face back up here um yeah class number 13 was just put up but what a couple weeks ago talking about all kinds of other things you can be doing if you want to become self-employed and you want to give up your day job or you're thinking of bringing extra money in and and not having to get a part-time job to you know worry about the bills um you want to transition uh slowly but surely you want to transition into your own life um you want to do what i do you want to be on the road you want to travel um you can trade your account with one of these little devices from anywhere right here in berlin uh you got your option trading account set up in 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 the us or canada you, you can trade this so you you can be in Berlin for a week or two, and uh, from uh, from about three thirty in the afternoon, Berlin time until uh, about ten o'clock Berlin time, the market is open, and so you, you can be out all the museums you want, take a boat tour, and have a beer. Not too many though. Got to got to be sharp when the options open up. Uh, when the market opens up, you can be uh, maintaining your uh, your portfolio, and uh, you can travel at the same time. Check out my classes and uh, learn how this is done. And join these folks right, right here. Um, those of you out there who are curious, who are these people, and what are they saying? Well, they're talking about option writing strategies that they have figured out becoming members of this channel. And uh, where else? I, I let me ask you this question, because <laughs> Jen and I were talking about this over the weekend. Um, I've put thirteen classes together on my website that you can watch anytime you want. Just go to the website, buy a class, watch it as many times as you want. Where else can you go Monday to Friday during market hours and ask the actual professor, that, that's me, questions about the classes that you were just watching uh, in, real, in real time while the, while the market is actually reacting? uh where, where where can you do that because to do this to to leave a message you just need to be a member of this channel it's 9.99 a month so i mean come on uh, 20 days we're, we're open 20 days a month at least for trading 
So you're dropping 50 cents a day to be able to ask me questions about options that you're writing because of the lessons you took on my website. Who, who else does that? How many, how many gazillions of market gurus are out there who have made classes for you, who offer courses on how to be a, you know, a genius trader and all that, um, you know, get rich quick being a stock market picker. Where can you talk to them live for 50 cents a day? I don't, I don't know that. I think meet Ke you can talk to meet Kevin, can't you? If you take meet Kevin's courses, I know he has real estate courses and he has a market course and all that but i mean he's you know what are they 800 thousand fifteen hundred bucks each my classes are a hundred dollars a piece i mean we're talking about the poor man the poor man way of becoming an option writer for a hundred bucks you can take my class and then a hundred bucks you can take another one and another and then you can ask the creator of the classes questions about the class himself you can't do that anywhere else for this kind of money this is a deal I think I should charge more money. I should I should charge you guys a thousand dollars a month to talk to me. That's not gonna happen. Okay. Um, anyway, here we are. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Ah, uh, good to have you here. Um, anyway, Jen and I were talking about that the other day, but you know, there's nowhere else you can do that to to ask Bruce about the the contracts you've written. Who else is doing that? I, 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 know there are, I know there are some really good option people out there, very uh, detailed technical option people out there, but I don't think they take questions. And then again, I don't know if you'd understand the answer. <laughs> that, that, that might be the other problem right there that, uh, yeah, that might be the problem. Okay. Anyway, what else is going on here? I just want to double check here. Um, a raw beach boy there's probably like seven eight dollars in premium still on it uh so unless you think the stock's gonna run 20 bucks up then i'd say just wait splayer so far at five hundred thousand. and uncle bruce you have jeans something from lithuania oh yeah yeah i have jeans yeah or have i understood you wrong or you know my father's from lithuania yeah my father grew up in lithuania his family way back when was german as well um and then uh, my mother was was german and uh so I got, I got all kinds of European, I don't know what in me, I suppose. Uh, Rob, if you move up in strike on a roll for the same price or more, then you also have the advantage that if it dips, you are closer to out of the money than before. That is right, Rob. Rob is, Rob knows. Uh, Rob is, Rob knows this stuff. Yeah, this is the other advantage of hanging out with this gang of ours here. If you become a member of this channel for $9.99 a month or you become the ultimate member of this channel, become a gold bagel family member of this channel for 25 bucks a month. You get to hang out with Rob and Duncan and Odin's Pumpkin and Cam and Kiwi and everyone else who's trading options all the time. And we, we talk all the time about options writing and strategies. This, this, this is live. You're live. In the, we're trading live. In, what are we doing here? In two minutes. We're, we're talking about live trading strategies right here, and you can be part of it by just being a member right here. Cheap. I mean, this is a joke. This is great. Um, I love this channel. I tell you, I think this is great. This is a great channel. What can I say? All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the Professor. That's a good nickname for Uncle B. The, the Intellectuals, says Duncan. Hang out with the intellectuals. There you go. <laughs> there you get ready. Francis is saying. Rob, how's it going? Uh, Rob. <laughs> We're having fun. We are a minute away from Larry Titus. We hope Larry's here. He's going to ring the bells to start everything off for us. And we're going to just see how the market does today. Uh, I'm showing the Dow up. Um, uh, I'm showing the Dow up 268 points right now. So uh, looking, looking, looking all right. I'm not, we're not going to complain about that, are we? No, no, no. Uh, we're up 46 on S&P. We're up 193 points on NASDAQ. So uh, we got um, we got stuff going on. Twitter stock is falling because um, Elon Musk says Twitter is refusing to give him information about spam and robot accounts and stuff like that. I, I think the games are just continuing psychologically between he and the company, I suppose. Larry, get ready. Rob, uh, let's see. I prefer Simpleton. Time to see Soulfly. Uh, I am not an intellectual. <laughs> 
Oh, gosh. Uh, we're just about there. Uh, ready to rock and roll. And let's see how the market wants to uh, wants to go today. And uh, hopefully it'll make some of you richer. Because it can. This market is uh, absolutely set up for you folks to make money on it. Um, I think we're open. Is that right, Larry? Yes, Larry. Larry has rung the bells and it's official. We are open now for trading today. Thank you, Larry, so much. Uh, Duncan, uh, blah, blah, blah. We're here. <laughs> uh, quick heads up for everybody. Um, I'm on right now. I'll be on this afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern time uh, for the final hour of trading. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. I will not be on the air in the morning. I will be on the air tomorrow afternoon for 3 o'clock Eastern, the final hour tomorrow. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday should be regular days. Uh, should be everything back to normal. But tomorrow is travel day. Tomorrow morning, we're traveling, Jen and I. And I don't think we'll be in our hotel early enough to go on live for the early show. So uh, keep an eye open for that. Okay. Uh, Duncan, uh, it's time for a coffee. Right on, buddy. We're up 181 on the Dow, I think, right now as the as the uh, markets are just um, starting up. We have to... Uh, we have to give the markets a bit of time to settle in and get going. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the, uh, if I can, I'm going to try to take a look at the Dow 30 stocks and see how they're, uh, how they're showing at the moment. Uh, let's see. Um, most are up at the moment, uh, so that's a good sign. Um, I only have five, four stocks that are not up on the Dow. It's Amgen, the Dow Chemical Company. Chevron and Verizon. Uh, Verizon's down two cents. Chevron's down seven. We don't have much of a way downside here. Uh, the worst performers, Amgen, down a buck forty-six. I mean, geez, that's as bad as it gets. Um, our best stocks this morning are Salesforce. This is on the Dow. Salesforce is up four ninety-three a share. Uh, Microsoft up three eighty. Visa up three eighty. Um, Apple up two. 40 Goldman up 209 United Healthcare up 147 Honeywell up a uh, buck 30 American Express up 108 Disney up 107 IBM 10 10 something 106 uh so we got a lot of gainers we have about six losers that are losing 2 3 16 22 30 cents 50 cents nothing serious on the downside so so far so good thank you um wonderful and I'm glad to see a nice little opening coming through Welcome all of you to the uh, to the show, the channel, uh, and hopefully we'll see some money being made. GameStop one thirty three ninety two. I show a gain of twenty three cents at the moment. Uh, uh, let's just kind of refresh this button over here and see what it said. Uh, the low of one thirty two twenty six. The high of one thirty five ninety two. I'm showing now one thirty four seventy as we settle in. Up a dollar now one thirty five thirty five. Up one sixty six on GameStop. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if that's accurate. We're uh, 199 points higher on the Dow now. Uh, Matterport is up 29 cents to 581. Smart rent up 49 to 644. SoFi 718 up 20 centinos. 2 million traded at 718 last for SoFi. Spire 189 up 17 cents. Spire uh, 600,000. I guess that's uh, that's looking great. GameStop 134.07 now up only 37 cents. We are still settling these trades through to open things up. Um, Splitter, probably that's why you look so familiar to me since the first show I've watched. And I see I'm three minutes behind you all here. Nick, um, number 152 on the thumbs up meter. How you doing, Nick? Welcome, buddy. Uh, Rob Spire is up 7%. Rob, a uh, low volume to open on GameStop. Duncan, Rob, how's it going? Splare, go so far. Uh, Aaron, hey, Uncle Bruce, do you think it's a wise idea to buy some Amazon stock now? Well, yes and no. Um, if you're going to buy Amazon, you're going to buy 100 shares. Why? Because you're going to write call options. That's why you'd buy Amazon right now. You'd just be buying Amazon to, to write options on it because you can probably afford it now compared to 2300 a share, you know. But to speculate on the stock, uh, it had a good run last week. It, it's been up, what, 500 bucks in the last little while. So it's had a run. Uh, but, you know, you buy some here and write, I don't know, 135s or something. Uh, what are we trading at? 124.86. Maybe you can write 130s on it uh, and bring in some uh, premiums. Uh, that's all right. Um, something to 
watch. I, I'd, I'd hold off right now and just see if the shares want to hold this gain today or not. They might back off later today, then go back up again tomorrow. Uh, they might go up all day today, half the day tomorrow, give up some gas tomorrow. I don't know. Um, I don't see the stock going to 150 just because it's split 20 to 1. But I've seen crazier things happen with stocks after splits. Normally, I find that the money is made on a stock split from when the company announces it until the split happens. But it doesn't always happen. But for a while, it wasn't happening on Amazon. It wasn't working until the last week and a half ago. It started to kind of work. Um, so there you go. Um, okay. Oh, uh, look at that. ATIP is traveling north. Rock and roll. ATIP, 206 and a half, up two and a half cents. Rocket Lab up eight and a half, 8.9 cents on Rocket Lab. Right around five bucks. Sixtera is up 62 cents this morning on 23,000 shares. Sixtera is trading at 514 a share. Uh, it actually touched 542 already. All time high. This is all time high territory for Sixtera right now. ME down 18 cents, just not catching a break yet. Pfizer down three. Hewlett Packard is up 40 cents to 4021. Twitter down a buck 80, 3830. Home Depot down a dollar to 30440, uh, now down like 60 cents. Robinhood 935 up 18. Bannock is up 383. Uh, IBM is up 124. Microsoft up 265. Apple up 236. Goldman up three and a half. 380 now. Cisco up 46 cents. Facebook up two dollars. Amazon up a dollar ninety-four to one twenty-four twenty-nine. Tesla seven twenty-one up seventeen dollars. Google twenty three hundred forty-five dollars up fifty-four dollars or two seventy after split. So Google is doing just as well as Amazon, if not better, because Amazon's only up one seventy now. Google is outperforming Amazon because Google hasn't split yet. It's going to twenty to one. Bed Bath Beyond down 11 to 7.99. JP Morgan up 152. Costco down 73 cents. Nvidia up 285. Disney at 109 up 64 cents. American Airlines up a penny. Netflix up three bucks to 202. Moderna up 166 to 138. So we have some mixed markets, but generally speaking, positive. We're up 185 on the Dow right now. Uh, was stronger in the pre-market than what it's showing at this moment. Um, Duncan is crossing his arms. Goldman Sachs moved almost four bucks already. Says Duncan, pick nose. Six there has been going up at the volume is always so low. Yes. Good morning, all from John Bickman. Hey, John. Um, we're up 35 points on the S&P. We're up um, 143 on NASDAQ. Um, these indices are are up, uh, but not like unbelievably up. But they're, they're up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there it is. What's happening with ME? You know, it's just backing up. I agree. Can't say. I can't. I can't answer the ME question. I. I really wonder uh, about uh, what is what. What the folks at, uh, you know, what are the folks with Richard Branson thinking? Uh, they're into the stock at ten bucks, big time, uh, millions and millions of dollars. Are they buying more? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see reports, uh, insider reports, that are telling me that. Maybe that's what it needs. Maybe the stock needs some insider buying to prop it up a bit. Um, that could catch the street in, you know, by, in a pleasant way, pleasant surprise. I haven't seen any evidence of that though. A Matterport is up 20 cents to 572. Smart Rent up 36 to 631. Go Smart Rent, uh, SoFi 699 up a penny. Spire 189 up 17. Come on, Spire, break two bucks. Uh, GameStop now down 160 uh, at 132.09. I, I was wondering. If we don't get volume on GameStop, why why would we go up? One hundred eighty four thousand traded. It's not like a you know a desperate rush of people to get in. Down two eleven at one thirty one fifty nine. Now two thirty three on the downside. One thirty one thirty seven. Uh, this looks like the low neighborhood of the day. Uh, the the the, tro the low trade I see right now one thirty eighty one. So uh, we've had that as the low trade already, 130.81, which would put it down about three bucks. Under a little pressure there. And again, that means in the money calls are less in the money as the stock's backing up. The question, of course, is, is there a $5 down day, a $15 down day? What is it? Um, 
is the stock going to be down a couple of bucks to start and then go up on the day? I, well, that's why we're here. Uh, we'll, we'll follow that. Uh, what is the volume on, on GameStop? Or not GameStop, Goldman Sachs. What's the volume on GS? Oh, Goldman, I, I show 1.1. 1. 1, no, I only showed it 73,000. Pardon me. 73,000 shares. Up 334 at 322 a piece. Yeah. The low in the last 52 weeks, 293. That wasn't that long ago. And we're now at 222. That's a 30 cent recovery, a $30 recovery. Pardon me. Rob, laugh out loud. My stream cut out as you said. What the something uh, at ME are doing? I almost thought you dropped the F bomb for a second there. <laughs> oh, oh, you wish. I don't do that. This is a PG rated channel. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to be PG rated. We have children watching, you know. I get introduced to kids when I have one on ones. People introduce me to their children, uh, saying, We watch you all the time. My kids know who Uncle Bruce is. He's that he's the guy on TV all the time. He's always on the TV. That's him. Uh hi, hi kids. Hi, hi, how's it going? <laughs> Hope you're doing all right. Um, yeah, 194 on spire up 22 cents. Look at that. Look at that spire. 195 up 23 cents. Uh 86,000 boy. No boy. Boy, when's the last time this stock has been this high or higher? Um yeah, it's been a while. Uh, it, it was at 204 on April the 6th, May the 6th, two months ago. It's been two months since we've been around here. This is good to see. Um, and then if we go back a little further, like December, uh, we were at 428 in December, 425. So go Spire. Yes, please. Uh, please go higher. Much, much, much higher. 208, 209 gain on the down now. Make that 225 on the Dow. We just are popping up now. Here comes the Dow. Uh, Matterport is 567 up 15. Smart rent. Looking at looking good. Up 47 cents to uh, 642. This is looking good. Uh, smart rent. Uh, hmm. Kind of like kind of like this chart. 676,000 shares have traded so far. Um, Kind of curious there. Uh, SoFi, 696 down two cents. Spire now, 195.5, 23 and a half cent gain uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, so go, stocks go, I say. Uh, Uncle Bruce Index, the UBI, let's move that UBI higher. That would be fine with me. 131.64 on uh, on uh, GameStop. Um uh, Jumping around here between 131 and 132, 133, somewhere in there we're jumping about. Okay. What else is going on? Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Rocket Lab looks tasty. Spire wants to break out. Let's go. 195. Go, Spire. Go. Yeah, 195 and a half. Come on, baby. Smart Red, 642 of 47 cents. Matterport up 16 to 568. GameStop 132.35 down a dollar 35. And AMC down 32 cents, 12.13. ATIP 209 and a half up five and a half. Rocket Lab up three to 290, 493 now. Six Stereo 1501 up 49. ME a little better, uh, but still down 11 and a half cents at 258 and a half. It was as low as uh, 243 this morning. It's recovered 15 cents actually. This is the high of the day on ME, according to my chart, but uh, it could sure use a lot more than this. Come on, ME. Let's go. Let's go. 248-point gain on the Dow. Thank you, everybody. Uh, is it time to write calls on Spire? No. Uh, Spire volume is only 114,000. Got to let her run, baby. Yeah, let her run to four or five bucks. Let's go. And then let's see what it does. 701 on SoFi up three, 648 on Smart Rent up 53 cents. Very good. Very good. ATIP 209 and a half. Um, good to see ATIP coming back here. Just trying to chug back. Come on, you guys. Let's go with this. 242 point gain on the Dow. Uh, Bruce, uh, what's going on with the Twitter? I don't know. It's this Elon Musk continual. Uh, I don't know. Is it a brain game? I mean, what are they? What are they? What are they doing? Playing playing brain games. Uh, he he claims that uh, that they Twitter are not providing him 
with the info he wants about how many robots are all over that thing. And I don't know if they have to provide him anything about that. I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't know if they can. I mean, I don't know. Can they? Could they? Why should they? I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. All right. Anyway, there it is. Uh, GameStop, 132.37, down 123. Uh, the Dow up 210. SoFi, $7. Spire, 196, up another half a penny, trying to get to $2 on the Spire. Could Spire break 2 bucks today? It's our lowest trading uh, former SPAC because ATIP is 209 and a half. Um, ME 259, uh, down 11 now, by the way, on ME. Uh, so you know, can we get these into the twos and then the threes and just and just kind of let's get, get back up here? Come on, come on, come on. Duncan says, Good morning, Jen. Nick, I, I want to write 10 on GameStop. Which one to write? Uh, do I write, you know, what, what 10 calls should I write on GameStop, Bruce? That's the question. Well. Yeah, I, I wonder, you know, do you write 135s that expire this Friday? Is that the plan? Um, stay out of the money, you know, look for a premium. Can you get any kind of a decent premium writing 135s for this Friday? That That is also the question. Will, will GameStop give you any kind of return? Um, looking at 135, from my vantage point, I'm showing 675 to 785. So, you can get, you know, near eight dollars. You know, you can get around eight bucks for a contract that expires this Friday. Uh, I'd I'd look at that. Yeah, I'd look at that. That's one thirty-five. Uh, if you want to write further out, that's next Friday. That would be the most popular contracts out there because it's the third Friday of the month. Uh, one thirty-five. So you might get close to eleven dollars for those. That's a pretty good premium to receive for next week Friday. You know, we got we got. 10 trading sessions that's a dollar 10 a day out of the money dollar 10 lost every day hmm pretty good uh for nick you know that'd be a thousand bucks a day uh uh nick moore to be fair twitter is crawling with bots everywhere it's annoying alberto i'm here you can start now good morning bagel family okay the show will officially start right now our man alberto has arrived thank you sir welcome to the show duncan alberto you're here uh let's get this let's get some move on. Uh, I'd like his attitude, you know, now that I'm here, let's make some money. How about that? It's simple. It's direct to the point. You know, no, 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 no sidestepping it. Well, let's see what happens. Um, anyway, um, what else is going on? Amazon right now is uh, 125.96, 125.91, up 350, uh, 135.6. That's like $70 a share. It's having a good day. Uh, so, you know, writing 130s. If you can get, if you can write 130s on Amazon, maybe you can get a nice premium. I don't know if they're showing anything yet. Are they? Are we getting quotes that are showing? Uh, you know, I don't think we have anything yet, do we? The, the 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 chains are still to be adjusted, I suppose. So might take a day or two for the option chains to be figured out. I don't know. Your platform is different than other platforms, and you may or may not be able to uh, be able to determine what you can get for your contracts yet. Um, Uncle Bruce, uh, Tiff says uh, to me, Uncle Bruce, I bought back my Hewlett Packard cover calls June 10, the expiry. I bought them back today. Uh, this this stock is trading at 4042, just to give me a little help here. Okay, so I, I, I don't know which ones he bought, but he bought back June 10s. Now I'm not sure if I should sell an in the money call because it is it is dividend time. For Hewlett Packard, and I think I could get exercise early. What are your thoughts? Am I wrong? So, okay, I don't know which ones you bought back because I don't know which ones you've written. Uh, so I'm not sure what to do, what to make of this. Uh, but uh, you know, if you want to write, you want to write calls that expire a couple of weeks from now. Um, you know, you're writing say 40. Can you write 41s, 42s on HPQ? Um, does your option chain show those? That might be uh, worthy of a consideration uh, for premium, even with a dividend situation. I mean, if you're writing out of the money calls, if you're going to be writing out of the money, you're not going to get exercised. So not to worry. Um, I bought back at 3750. He says, okay, so those are 
those are 37.50s, and I lost 160 on the trade, but your stock went up, right? So that's why, right? So if you're going to write now HPQs uh, for down the road a little bit, um, I'm just going to punch this in here. HPQ. If I can get this to work for me. Here comes the HPQ code. Um, okay, now I'll go options. Let my big ass iPad load up here. It's it's taking its time. It's it's tired. It's on it's on the road all the time. Uh so okay. Um June. Okay, we can write you can write contracts that expire this Friday in 50 cent increments. Fair enough. Uh, you're not gonna get a lot of money for them, obviously. Uh, writing 41s will only get you between seven cents and thirty-two cents. Last trade 31. Okay. Uh Next week, uh, contracts like 41s are going 50 to 52 to 57. 42s are like 28 to 33. My quote might be a little late, though I might be off a few pennies. So in theory, okay, you lost a dollar sixty on the trade. You could turn around and write 41s for next week Friday. Take about 55 to 60 cents, having risen your exercise price from 37.50 to 41 that's a 350 increase on exercise price uh with a 55 cent cash that means you've raised four dollars a share to you if you were to get exercised which more than compensates you losing this uh trade right um and it's next week friday and if they don't break through 141 ish because after the dividend is declared and they pop they pop back to 39.50 let's just suppose i'm not guaranteeing it but if they went down to 39.50 sometime next week this contract is worthless you can buy it back for a nickel and then you can write a contract for two weeks further out yet again for another 40 50 something cents depending on the price you pick um you can just keep working that way um definitely or uh look you can write a further out call um you can write on June 24, a $41 call for about 75 to 77, 78, maybe 80 cents. You can do that. Or you can start looking at July calls if you want to write for higher premiums. Um, a July 1st expiry um, is going to bring, bring you what? Um, I'm not sure if this, accurate, this is an accurate quote. I'm having trouble figuring this one out. Yeah, this is all screwed up on my machine right now, so I'm not even going to try to quote that. Yeah, there's some pretty wacky prices showing here, so I'm having trouble figuring this out. July 15, July 22. Yeah, July 15 is the third Friday. Uh, 41s, maybe, maybe write 41s, maybe write 42s. I don't know. I don't like the bid asks, and I, I'm not too crazy about the, uh, the 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 lack of a tight market. Stay closer in, uh, maybe a couple of weeks, and uh, take a look there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gaiotti, three hundred thirty-five thousand volume on GameStop so far. We are right now on GameStop down ninety-two cents at one thirty-two seventy-eight on three hundred forty-eight thousand volume. Not great. But that doesn't tell me we're going higher. Um. Anyway, yeah, last week we we're hitting one to two million in the first ten minutes, and we're not we're nowhere near that. That's right. That's the GameStop slowdown I see right now. There's a slowdown on GameStop share trading at the moment, and um, kind of giving me the impression that we might be easing up a little on the price of the stock as we go along here. Possibly, uh, we'll see. Down a dollar right now, 132.70. The Dow's up 201, but not up 501. It's good, but it's kind of stopped, hasn't it? It's like not going anywhere, really. Dow's kind of going, yeah, I'm up 200. What, what do you want? Uh, well, I want more. Uh, 0.6%, uh, point, you know, six tenths of a percent. No, no, no. Uh, now, quick 6.6 six says that I own my Amazon shares through SoFi. I managed to pick up enough pre-split to end up with 16 shares. SoFi is showing I am down 16,000 post-split. 
SoFi is showing. I am down. To, oh, you're doing this through SoFi, the app. You're buy. You own the stock inside SoFi, the brokerage app. In the, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, they they haven't yet adjusted for this, but you, you're fine. You're you're good to go. It's okay. Uh, one thirty three even on uh, on GameStop right now. The Dow's up one eighty eight point nine. S&P up 37, NASDAQ up 145. That's where we are right now. Okay, that's the story as we see it. Um, Matterport still up 16 cents to 568. We've got um, we've got uh, Smart Rent up 41 to 636. We've got SoFi the shares at 702 up four cents. Spire one. 99 um, up 27 cents this is the high of the day i think uh although my my phone is slow today uh, i think it's a high of the day on eighty six thousand. is that right uh gamestop 132.88 down 82 amc down 24 um atip is at 209 up a nickel rocket lab up three to 493 six to 1496 up 44 me down 18 to 251 uh there you have it quite the day on spire and a good day on smart rent two good looking moves here um i like it i like it a lot and and then six tear up 44 cents i guess we're not complaining there either okay um that's the latest um on this here market uh and the low of the day for gamestop 130.71 and the high 135.92 that's been the market so far okay um ab is saying you know it'd be pretty neat if spire hit five bucks by the end of the month and 10 bucks by august a guy can dream you know spire yeah i mean 199 and a half right now inspire we're, we're going for two bucks i mean there's a little resistance obviously at two dollars it's a nice round number some people are selling there but if it goes through two it could go to 202 to 205 in a hurry 210 quick uh, we'll see uh, 213,000 volume. Um, this is about the high of the day. I think we did have a trade already at two. So it's there. Um, it's trying to, uh, you know, maybe break through there. It would be great if it did. Um, like to see that Matterport break six. I'm happy to see Smart Rent breaking six. So far, I'd like to see it back over eight to nine. Um, let's go. IBM is running, says Duncan. Uh, Tiff, AB, if Spire goes to five this month, I'll open a bottle of champagne. Duncan, 651. Um, I, I know I'm not actually down like that. I just couldn't help but chuckle and to share how this Spire, so far, how the SoFi app is showing his trade. Yeah, these splits it takes some brokerage firms can do it right away. Others take a few days to figure it out. I don't know. We're up two eleven again on the Dow. So okay, interesting, 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 interesting. Uh, down eighty eight on uh, on uh, on GameStop. Spire two bucks. There it is. Two dollar trade on on Spire. Just just saw that hit. And then I got a glitch now showing 156. So <laughs> glitches everywhere uh, are showing up here and there. So you know, gotta gotta tough it out. Here we go. Here we go. Another another glitch just came through. Uh, 698 on SoFi, 199 on Spire, 570 Matterport, 631 Smart Rent, up 222 on the Dow. Okay, there you are. There you go. Yeah, GameStop, um, 132.50. I, I kind of wonder if it's uh, going to break 130 here today. And if it did, uh, would it then head for 125 in a hurry? Uh, and if it did that, you know, being down seven, eight dollars, that gets it kind of in that another five, six bucks, and we're down 10% routine. You know, we're down to that S, we're into that SSR thing all over again on GameStop. Is that possible? Well, anything is we're down 150 right now um on 348 000 volume we got we don't have a lot happening here on the gamestop shares so there you have it um on other stocks let's take a look now hewlett packard 40 35 up 54 uh twitter down two bucks to 3807 home depot 304 81 down 27 cents Vanic Vectors down is up 311. IBM up 350 to 144. 
That's had a good run lately. Microsoft up 226, Apple up 188, Goldman up 429, Cisco up 57, Facebook up 65, <clears throat> Amazon 125.98 up 360 a share. $72 uh, pre-split. Uh, Tesla up 11 and Google up 79. So those two are about the same, uh, going up 70 odd bucks each. Okay. Black Bed Bath Beyond down a penny. Blackberry up eight. Royal Caribbean fifty six sixty, up twenty seven cents. Um, Target down one forty three. J P Morgan up one ninety three. Costco down twenty six cents. Walmart down seventeen. Nvidia up four dollars. Disney up eighty cents. American Airlines up seventeen cents. Netflix up three dollars. And we got Moderna up 250 at 139.65. Boeing down 34 cents to 138.91. There you go. Okay, up 270 on the Dow now. The Dow looks like it's having its best run of the day. Uh, yep, it's at the high today of 287 on the upside, going for that 300 point gain, which we saw in the pre market over an hour ago. We did see it pushing 300 for the high in the pre market. Now it's coming into the actual market. 53-point gain on S&P, 199 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is up 1.66%. The Dow is up 0.92. So you got to add half to the Dow, add 150 points to the Dow, which puts it up 450. That equals what the NASDAQ is doing now. So the Dow is, is underperforming NASDAQ. Okay. AB is saying, hey, I, I guess Spire got added to the Russell 3000, question mark? Um, I have no idea. Where did you see that? It's trading at $2 right now, up 28 cents. Um, volume of 236000 on Spire at $2 a share, up 28 cents today. Um, that is the best level in a week, the highest level in over a month, and that is the highest level since we saw $2 for the last time. April the 6th was the last time we saw a $2 print on Spire, so it, it's been a while, okay? Um, we got we got Matterport here at 578. Uh, we were last week as high as 592 or so. Come on, Matterport. Uh, smart rent 632. A high today of 655. The highest that's the highest level in a month. Oh, for sure. Um, we haven't seen 655 on smart rent since. Um, Oh my gosh, uh, March 23rd, March 22nd, March, April, May, June, three months ago. It's the last time we saw Smart Rent here. This is its best level in three months. We need a run on SoFi. 708, we're up a dime. We need a big run here. Let's go. 135 on GameStop, up a buck 48. ATIP now 210, up six and a half cents. ATIP. Um, in the last week, this is its highest level. In the last month, this is its best level. In the last three months, this is ATIP's best level. The last time we did better than 210 on ATIP, February the 25th, March, April, May, June, almost four months ago. Wow, it's been a long time. Okay, not high enough, but it is up. Well, 211, almost 212 on ATIP right now. Volume on ATIP, 61,000, 82,000 volume. 82,000. Man, that's quiet, isn't it? Isn't that something? But it's up. Uh, Rocket Lab, 508 up 18 cents. Um, 508, we were over that last week. And uh, we've, uh, we, we, we need a run here. Uh, we got to get to over 580 to beat May. So we, we need a shot here. We need another, another buck, another buck. On Rocket Lab, and we can get excited about where it's trading at. Okay, six there of fifteen oh two up fifty cents. The Dow now up three hundred and sixteen points. High today. Uh, Matterport five eighty up twenty eight. Smart Rent now six thirty up thirty five. SoFi seven oh nine. Spire two bucks. 
GameStop up a dollar 49. 135.19 is the last trade on GameStop. Whew. Mm. Okay. Okay. 0.91% gain on the uh, on the Dow. 1.3 on S&P, 1.8 on NASDAQ. Okay. Cody is thumbs up number 171. Thank you, Cody, for that thumbs up. Uh, we'll take it. Um, Odin's Pumpkin says, I saw on Reddit that SoFi is in the Russell 3000 now. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, Austin, what's with, what's with Spire? It's at two bucks. Something's not right. Uh, Robert Benson, 174 thumbs ups. Thank you, bud. Bama Baby. Yeah, IBM got up to 144.73, the 52 week high, 145.98. IBM is pushing around this all. It's 52 week high now. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's right up there. Trade at 23.7 times earnings, but the earnings must be expected to be better because the stock is ahead of the earnings it's moving up 319 a share 14436 right now on IBM and then Microsoft 273 Apple at 140 almost 148 on Apple now Goldman 32374 Cisco is at 4596 up 71 cents Facebook up 227 to 193 Amazon is now up 549 a share that's 110 bucks on the old 20 to 1 scale. 127.90 on Amazon. Uh, Tesla up 18. Google up 94. So that's why you see Amazon. Sorry, that's why you see the markets higher. And uh, NASDAQ up 230, up 1.9%. They're being pushed by the bang stocks. Uh, the Dow's up now 331. We're up one full percentage point, where NASDAQ is up almost 2%. So the Dow now has to be up 650 to match NASDAQ. That is how strong NASDAQ is right now. Very, very good. A lot of money coming into the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P 500 markets as we speak. Iota is saying, so proud of Spire today. So proud. $199.5. Uh, $2 has been the high already. 263000 volume. We're up 27 and a half cents. Hey. Give me days like this, uh, 10 days in a row like this, and oh, oh my goodness, are we looking good. Yeah, 712 on SoFi, up 14. 645 on Smart Rent. We're up 50 cents on Smart Rent. This is a really good day. Uh, 306,000 shares traded on Smart Rent, 646. I mean, man. Yeah, this is, this is great. Here's, here's the last. This is the one month chart on smart rent. Look at that thing going way up there. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's nice. And then and then Spire 199.8. This is the one month chart on Spire. Look at that thing way up there. Uh three month chart. You can see it's got a ways to go yet. It's it's coming back. You know, it's coming back here, but it it, it it's got it's got this to do yet. So a little more info need, a little more movement on Spire, but they 134.69 on GameStop, up 99 cents. The Dow's up 303. The Dow's up 303. NASDAQ up 213. Um, markets are jumping around a lot. What, what are you going to do? Uh, IBM is up 18 bucks in three months, says Duncan. How about that tip? Uncle Bruce, I now sold an HPQ June 24. Uh, $41 strike for uh, 86. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Got 86 cents. So you've moved up the strike price from 37.50 to 41. That's $350 more a contract if you were to be exercised and 86 cents on top of that. 436 more to you on a $41 stock. Yeah, that's a good percentage move there. That's all right. That's all right. Now, look, if the stock sits at 40 41 that was $86 contract, $0.86 cents each, they're going to drop. And that's money to you. So you're making money. Um, stock wants to go higher? Great. Go. Just, just keep going. Make, make you richer. Well done. Well done. Okay. 
Um, pick knows. I know. Uh, I noticed Spire call options rumbling in the first hour for about two weeks now. I've noticed this. Coyote, uh, I sold Spire three dollar calls. Um, I bought for five, sold them for twenty. Not a lot, but I'll take that small win. So, uh, bottom. Okay, I, I sold three dollar calls. I bought for five. Sold them for twenty. Uh, something there doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm getting old. Spire is a dollar ninety nine point five shares. See, so you bought them at a nickel. You sold them at twenty cents. Is that what you're doing? It, it, I, I I get it. Uh, it's okay. All right, Aaron. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to short? uh spire uncle bruce oh no no that's not a good idea um it's gone up with no news i i wouldn't do that um no i have seen facebook flooded with sofi advertising says alberto interesting eh sofi advertising 712 up 14 cents right now and smart rent 652 up 58. Look at that go. Uh, let's go, lame duck. I'm 181. Thumbs up, Bruce. Thank you, lame duck. AB, I'm confident that buying Spire and ATIP at sub is a no. At sub two bucks is a no brainer. Spire is a government contractor, and ATIP is a chain. Seems in the near future they'll be at the original SPAC price and beyond. There you go. I mean that. Just think about the multiple of money you're making, 500%. It goes to 10 bucks. yeah? Nice. I bought the calls, uh, Goyote. I bought them at $0.05. Cents. I sold them at 20 You made four times your money. Right on. Uh, they were $3 strike, and I bought them for a nickel, and went, well done. Well done. Nice nice trade. I mean, yeah, did you do 500 of them? <laughs> if you did one, you made 15 bucks. Is there something wrong with making $15? Never. But there's something about making 150 or 300 or 3,000, isn't there? But money is money, and that's what it's about. Uh, Tiff, yes, I was hoping for something close in time, but I have to pay 350 for an option. To so so sell and buy is 750. They eat so much percentage wise for the smaller premiums. Um, correct, says Coyote John. Not cool, Aaron. Laughing out loud, Aaron Noise. Uh, let's see, Bama Babe. No. Uh, Goody, I wish I did 500 of them. There you go. I had 10 of them. Well, it's 150 bucks. Thank you very much. $150 profit. Thank you very much. Nice. That's all right. Putting in 50 and turning it into 200. Do that every day. Yeah, baby. That's that's paying bills. It's okay. Up 315 on the Dow now. 315 on the Dow. 215 on NASDAQ. Okay. Um, this is better. Um, Twitter stock falls. Musk says Twitter's refusal on spam is a breach of the merger pact. There you go. That's what he said. Maybe he's looking for an excuse to back off. I don't know. I don't know. Goody. Thanks, Uncle Bruce. You got it, buddy. Profit is a profit. Oh, if I only, oh, if only there were liquidity when you can get those cheap calls that bounce four times. Laugh out loud, Nick. Why didn't someone tell me to buy more Spire? Nick, um, I'm trying to buy back Twitter covered call that I wrote for 68 cents. The bid ask is 34 to 46. I got a stink bid at 29. Good deal or 26. Um, I would be going 26. I wouldn't go 29. 29 is not a stink bid. 31 is a stink bid. 26 is a stink bid. Uh, selling at 29 is a stink offer or 39 or 49 or 59. But I, I would put them in at, I try to buy them at 26, Nick, and just sit there. Um, John, you still have time, Nick. It's only two bucks here. Uh, Goyote, Musk sounds like me trying to break a deal that I had with a friend on the playground, coming up with every little specific excuse I could find, laughing out loud. 324 gain now, 328 gain on the Dow going higher. Matterport, 575 up 23. Smart rent up 62 cents now to 656. SoFi, 711 up 13 cents. Spire, 197.2 up 25.2. GameStop gone negative again, 132.56 down 114. AMC down a dime. ATIP, 213 up nine. Rocket Lab, 506 up 
15, 504, 1504, up 52, 1504. ME still down 20 at 250 a share. Okay. Okay. Lame duck. I got my 100 shares of Amazon. Yay. Lame duck. I'm thumbs up 128. Thank you for these thumbs ups, everybody. Keep them coming in for me. Uh, we're up 326 on the Dow, 327, maybe even 328 now. 57 point gain on S and P, 217 on Nasdaq. Oil down 32 cents. Now it's down 34 cents. Yeah, interesting. 133 on GameStop, down 70 cents on GameStop. Uh, the low 13071. The high 135.92. That's the high of the day, 133 at the moment. Volume today on GameStop, 695,000. Uh, yeah, so not a lot. But it's it's done okay. I mean, it's hanging in there. GameStop, 133, 133.65. It's jumping around, okay? Tiff, uh, I really would like to sell some smart rent covered calls now since it moved quite a bit uh over the last month but the option chain is a mess yeah i wouldn't do that on smart rent. i think smart rent's trying to break out i think it's trying to break back into the seven eight range let it go just let it let it run stay out of its way nick uncle bruce i just wrote 14 GameStop, 17th june's 135 covered calls for 961 so out of the money couple of bucks uh 961 just been brought in 14 times so that's uh, 13 odd grand right there nice and uh out of the money uh, this sucker goes down to 125 120 today he's already laughing uh, this uh sits at uh, 130 in a week from now he's laughing um goes to 136 a week from now he's still laughing uh Nick way to go that's a good write, and uh, that's a good cash haul. Uh, make them pay you. Absolutely. Write these 135s and dare them to take you out. Dare them. Nicely done. 132.40 down $1.30 on the stock. 132.34 now. Uh, there you have it. Um, AB says, I wonder if there's a parallel universe where Elon Musk has a doppelganger named Elron Funk who owns an electric car factory that's a worker cooperative and there are no labor issues. See, we could all be in one, we could be just in one little drop of water in our universe and there's another drop of water over here that we don't know about with its parallel universe. We don't know. Michael uh, wrote June 17, Apple 150s, 294 per, not ready for on SoFi yet. There you go, Michael, well done. Um, Apple shares right now are 148.12. So he's writing 150 calls. They're out of the money, a buck 80. Uh, they're dying next uh, Friday. He's bringing in $294 a contract saying, come on, Apple, come on, get me. Come on, get me. Right on. Uh, okay. I'll take that deal. Yeah uh let's see what happens here all right mike good job all right uh where else are we at now let's come back here to the dow we're up 311 on the dow smart rent 649 sofi 714 come on sofi let's go gamestop 132.19 dropping 131.92 on gamestop we're dropping again we're dropping a little more um yep we're dropping a little bit more 132.12 down 158. Okay. There you go. Writing 135s out of the money. Easy money. Um, those of you who've written calls that are in the money, they're coming down. So, okay. Let's see what it does. 35 cent drop on oil. Go go on that oil. Boy, that'd be nice if oil were to drop. That would be sweet. Don't know if it'll happen, but yeah. 98 bucks a barrel would be a lot better than this. Coyote Multiverse Theory. Theory. They asked me how well I understand theoretical physics. I told them I had a, theoretic, a theoretical degree in physics. They said, welcome aboard. Uh, you know, theoretically, I was theoretically. <laughs> Congratulations, question mark. 317 point gain on the Dow. Um, holding on to the highs of the day, it looks like. 
um, better than 170 on the Dow, right? Uh, okay, uh, 195 and a half on Spire. A little little pause under two dollars a share here. 714 on SoFi up 16 cents. 132.21 on uh, on GameStop down 149 a share right there. Okay, and we got uh, we got ATIP at 212.6 up eight and a, and a half cents. We're up 16 cents on Rocket Lab to 506. Uh, six there, 1507 up 55. We've got ME down 25 cents. Just just not good. That's not good. Uh, and Pfizer up 18 cents. And uh, HPQ up 41 to 4022. Um, Home Depot up 170 to 306.80. Uh, Vectors 245.80 up. Four, IBM up 296 to 144. Microsoft up 289 to 272.90. Apple up 271 to 148. Goldman up 629. Uh, 324.97. Almost $325. Go, Goldman. Go, 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 go. Uh, Cisco up 79 cents up to 46 bucks now. Coming back. Uh, Cisco um, in the last month, they were sitting around 50.51 in about three weeks ago and then they crapped out uh they crapped out to 4130 now 46 so they're battling back to this high 40s level on cisco they were a nice steal down there uh, amazon up 465 a share to 127 dollars and google up 82 bucks tesla up 14 dollars okay nice work nick says alberto AB heard a debate uh, where a guy said under Trump gas was under two bucks, and he'd like to go back to that. And the retort was, "You'd like another plague to collapse the economy to kill oil demand." I'm laughing my uh, tush off on that. Is that what you'd like? Wow. Be careful what you ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, GameStop 132 down a dollar seventy. The low 13071. So we're a buck thirty away from the low of the day on, on GameStop right now. Okay. 306 uh, 316 is the game gain on the Dow. 316 is the game. Jen, how you doing? I just stubbed my toe. <laughs> Jen just stubbed her toe. That's not a good idea, Jen. Carpet. Carpet. The carpet made carpet. her stubber tough. Carpet in the way. It's in the way. It's not good. Yeah. It's a tough time. Um, <laughs> it's a hard not life for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Jen has an unenviable <laughs> task today. No. She doesn't want to do it. <laughs> but she has to do it. Do I? Do I really? Do I? Really? Are you sure I have to do it? Can I just, can't we just buy all new clothes? <laughs> yeah. Can't we just go out and buy a brand new set of luggage and just buy new clothes with it and leave all this other stuff behind? She has to pack today. Pack. We got to pack. <laughs> we got two big suitcases, two small ones, and we're on a train tomorrow. Now we got all day to do What's it. Your point? <laughs> What's your point? She says. Larry says, Hi, Jen. Good morning, Larry. A B, uh, I filled up my tank once when it was a buck sixty. That tank lasted me for about four months. <laughs> nicely <laughs> done. Nicely, nicely done. Uh yeah. 13120 now on GameStop. We are uh, 50 cents away from the low of the day. GameStop's now down 240 a share, 50 cents or so away from the low of the day. Will it break this 13071 level? It seems like it wants to. Um, we'll see. The Dow is up three hundred one right now. Nick says, um, "I had bought, uh, I had bought Tesla on Friday for seven twenty two. Then it dropped to seven hundred when Elon said ten percent cut. Then he must have got a call from the White House and he changed the tune. Thank God I sold it on the first pop. There you go, buddy. There you go." John Anderson says, "Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen." She's saying hi, John. I say good morning. Good morning, John. Yeah. It's 424 here. I know. But it's morning where I he is. I, I, yeah, I, 
John, where are you located? Are you in California? I can't remember. John Anderson. Uh, John Johnson. I'm, yeah, John Anderson. I, I'm wondering if he's in California. Welcome, no, John. One, to be in Florida with the Seminoles. Oh, a 131.80 is the GameStop share. 110 from the low of the day. Uh, okay. Because John Anderson sings Seminole Wind. John Anderson sings Seminole Wind. <laughs> so he should be. I'm sure it's the same one. It's, uh, he's the same guy. How many John Andersons can you be? It's one or two in the United States, really. This has got to be the guy. This has got to be John Anderson. John Anderson, the performer. Maybe he can have a few bars. A one and a two and a one. And no? We were we were in, uh, uh, Jen won't remember this, but um, um, we were driving um, years ago from Canada down to uh, Las Vegas and to uh, the desert. And uh, what we, we, we have done this. We have driven from when we used to live in Creston. We would drive one long day to get to a place called Jackpot, Nevada. Now, Jackpot, Nevada is just south of the Idaho border in Nevada. Like just? Like hundreds of yards just. south of the border. And so on the north side of the border in Idaho is desert. On the south side of the border, Nevada border, Idaho, Nevada, one is jackpot, Nevada, it's and casino. there's a bunch of casinos there, and hotels and restaurants and souvenir shops. You can't believe it. Uh, gas stations, Weird. people. So I wonder why that would be. Um, anyway, I mentioned I mentioned it because this is the part that Jennifer won't remember. Um, the the there was one hotel. I believe we stayed in it, but we may not have. I can't remember anymore. I think the, the one hotel we stayed in, they had a property across the highway oh, yeah, as yeah. well. You remember and you that? had to walk across the highway. Or drive across. Right. So they had, yeah. a, they had a parking lot on both sides of the highway. They had the casino on this side and a hotel building on this side. The casino also had a hotel wing as well. <laughs> anyway, that's not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say was on the casino side, they also had a showroom. And they had acts. So, you know, when you hit the big time, you can play casino showrooms, one of which is located in Jackpot, Nevada. And who was playing in Jackpot, Nevada? Is John, Many, Anderson? John Anderson, Seminole. Really? And, yeah. So oh, John, John John had that he had that up curve of his career oh, and he hit the big time when he became, you know, a star. And John kept working, and John kept working, but John hadn't had a top country hit in a while, and he was singing that Seminole Wind song, you know, every show, and still looking for the next hit. But we caught him. We didn't see the show. We just saw the billboard advertising that he was here for the week in Jackpot, Nevada, playing in a casino uh, show. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's on the way back. It's on, the, it on, on the way back. on the way back. But hey, that's still better than Joe's Bar and Grill in Encino. That Not that there's anything wrong with the folks in Encino. Love you guys. But hey, Jackpot Nevada, baby, that's a happening place. It's better than digging ditches. Well, it's better than digging ditches. That's true too. So, so John, wherever you are, we wish you nothing but the best. I <laughs> hope you get another hit. And keeps your career going another twenty years, and then you can play the casino showroom in Laughlin or in Henderson or 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 somewhere in North Vegas, and make some bigger bucks in bigger rooms. That would be great. Because uh, I I don't know how much money would it pay John Anderson and his band to play Jackpot Nevada. Uh, Probably one or two shows a night. I don't know about two shows. Maybe just one show a night in Jackpot for about a three, four night gig, and then hop on the bus and drive to the next place. Um, that's tough work, man. That is tough work. Uh, that's that's called working. Yeah. AB. Now I'm driving nearly every weekday, going places and buying stuff, but gas is like. 
five bucks a gallon. John Anderson, I'm in Florida. I'm in Florida, See? baby. See, it's, he's the man. He's with the Seminoles. Down he's down there with the Seminoles. AB taking taking the bus home, Nevada. The house always wins, says AB. You get off the plane, you just hand them your checking account info, and they empty it and give you a Greyhound ticket back. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what can I say? Uh, it is what it is, what it is, and that's what it is. All right. Well, okay, folks, I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut my show off right here for you today. And I'm going to say thank you for joining me today um, and letting me be part of your lives for two hours or so. I appreciate it. Uh, Jen and I are, are here in Berlin uh, until tomorrow. I'll be on the air again today at 3 o'clock. Uh, join me this afternoon for the final hour. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be heading to Munich tomorrow. And then we'll be on again tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern from Munich. But uh, today uh, we're going to stop this show here. And then we'll be back on again at three o'clock Eastern. He's a little later. Make on. Me pack. I'm not going to make her pack. I, I don't make her do anything. She's make me pack. No, that's not true. I. It's just that she can't come with me unless she has some clothes to wear. <laughs> and who has more clothes than I have? Uh -huh. She does. Uh -huh. I wear two T-shirts. I got like TWB uh, traveling with Bruce DB. What have I got? I got. I get, I'm not even wearing pants. I mean. <laughs> I just need a backpack and I'm good to go. I'm not pants. I got these. I don't, these need pants. I don't need any. Who needs pants? <laughs> pants. Schmantz. Swinging was his big hit, says Lame Duck. Uh, Larry, thumbs up, buddy. Have a good break, y'all, says Displayer. John, uh, thanks, everybody. Bama, babe. I'm laughing my tush off here. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for being around. Uh, keep your eye on that GameStop. Uh, way to go, um, uh, way to go, uh, Nick, on writing those calls today. And anyone else that's writing calls today, HPQs and Apple calls and and all the other, you call writers, you're on it. You're selling into strength, and I think this is a good move. Um, uh, look for you know, look for the markets just kind of go, eh, and uh, let the time premium come your way, baby. That's what it's all about. Get paid for the time. That you're holding these stocks. No pants, Bruce, says John Bickman. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, all, says Al Al. Where are my pants? All right, guys. I'll catch you today at 3 o'clock Eastern. We'll shut this baby down later today and uh, see how much richer you're getting. Uh, keep an eye on those markets. And we'll talk to you later, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Goodbye from Berlin.